Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do this um, pretty little rose demonstration and I'm just gonna do a very quick sketch on a watercolor greeting card. I just taped this down to my paper, but then I realized that I'm not sure which way I taped my card. If I taped it so it opened up on the bottom, yes. Okay, so when you're painting on a watercolor greeting card and don't ask me how I know this, you wanna make sure that your fold is on the bottom or you know, on the right hand side so that when you give somebody the card it'll be going the right way. Um, I had a couple of requests to do a hand painted Mother's Day card so I thought we could do a pretty rose and I thought we could do it kind of from an interesting angle where we're kind of looking um, up at the rose so I'm just starting by st sketching on a stem and I'm going to sketch on just a couple little like uh, leaves kind of right at the hip of the rose. And then I'm going to switch over to, um, I think I'm going to switch over to a yellow pencil. If this doesn't show up, then I'm just going to, I'll go in with the red. But I just want to kind of get the, um, get an idea of how big I want this, the head of the rose to be. Okay, so you probably can't see that, but that gives me an idea. And now I can go in with the red pencil and I can get a little bit more detailed uh, with my sketch. So um, this is a very interesting type of perspective to look at. Um, so I am just going to kind of draw petal by petal and have it um, kind of come out from the center portion. And I've got some folds on the leaves. Just want to make sure that I've kind of got them evenly spaced. The cool thing about this, though, is that people typically do not see a flower from this angle. I mean, it's kind of an artistic way to look at it. So people aren't going to be like, well, that's obviously not how it looks. Nobody looks at it like that. So you're, you're opening somebody's eyes into a different way of, of seeing things, which I think is one of the coolest things um, about art. And this one's going to have a little dip kind of coming down there. And another petal there. So I just love how you see all these like kind of overturned or curled under leaves. I think it's really kind of cool. All right, I also want to get um, a few leaves in here. So I'm just going to kind of off of the stem, pull just a little kind of a line and leave. Uh, rose leaves are kind of, um, they're a little more oval or almond shaped. You know, they're not really pointy. They're not really um, V shaped like, you know, lilac leaf. They're more oval. So you just want to make sure that you have a, a kind of soft softness to them. I have one over here. Okay, so um, we've got our basic sketch on. I didn't put any details because I don't want to deal with them at this point. If you want to do a background, now is the time to do it. So uh, since we do have our sketch on there, I'm actually going to um, grab a round brush and I've just it doesn't really matter this is a small uh, canvas so you can use whatever type of brush you want or whatever material I should say and we're gonna wet the background and you know this is this is going to be kind of a quick card if you wanted to after you were done you could either rubber stamp or write ha uh, happy Mother's Day down like either down here in the corner or up here in that corner I think both places would would work um, or you could do a little collaging um, you know, whatever you want, or you could just leave it plain. I like all those different options. Now, I like to almost go right up to the edge and let some of that color wick out. I think it's pretty. And I think since that's kind of one section, nothing else is touching it, I'm going to go in and start adding my color for the background there. I think I want to do a couple shades of blue. I'm going to do ultramarine blue. Just kind of add it here and there. Just kind of let it float around. I'm also trying to use up some paint that's on my palette. Oh, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that gave me such encouraging support uh, with launching my class last week. It's been a great success. Um, several students have completed and they've told me how much they've enjoyed the class. And um, I will link it in the video description in case anybody is curious about it. But I just, um, I launched my first watercolor course this uh, last weekend. Yeah, a couple days ago. And um, it's just been, it's just been wonderful. It's, um, it's been so cool to hear everybody's um, comments and uh, and whatnot, and it's it's wonderful. I think there's a lot of content packed in there, and if you want to check it out, I will link it below. You just never know. You never know, like, you know, because I've been doing free videos on YouTube for years. You just never know if, you know, hey, they get the cow for free or they buy the milk. Wait, 
No. Would they buy the cow if they get the milk for free? So that's kind of like you're always kind of wondering that, um, I think. So now I'm going to move on to another section, wet it, and then add in some colors, kind of let them flow. Um, I like the ultramarine blue because it has a beautiful texture to it. It just it just tends to granulate on its own, which means kind of the pigment settles out a little bit and you get this really lovely texture. If this is too dark for you, what you can do is crinkle up a, um, a napkin or a paper towel or a rag and just kind of press it. And then you get this almost like you're looking up at the sky and you've got some pretty clouds in there. And the longer you let that uh, paint sit on there, especially with the phthalo blue, the more staining you'll get. So it just depends on if you want to be able to lift back to the white or not. So now I'm going to try to wet this entire background over here together. Um, I probably could have used like a juicier brush, but for for a greeting card, um, this these Strathmore greeting cards have quite a bit of sizing on them. So I don't find that things dry out on me too quickly. The, the paint in the water tends to sit right at the top, so I don't feel like I have to have this paper as wet as I would like in Arches or any other 100% cotton paper. This actually, these greeting cards are what I, and I'll link to these below as well. And these are what I teach with when I'm teaching like the um, classes at the library or big workshops because you can finish them in a, um, you can finish them in like an hour and a half period of time, even in a big group like that. So uh, that's what I use for those. And you can lift up their door. It's durable enough that you can lift up. So if you're looking for an affordable surface that lets you rework a bit and lets you fix errors then give these a try they they work out to be about 30 cents a piece if you buy them in bulk and when you're done you have a beautiful card you can send away and i i kind of encourage that because i think sometimes we look back like if we look back in our sketchbook and we'd be like oh i'm so much better at this now oh yuck i don't like looking at these old things but if you you know you pr do your practice and then you mail it away somebody else gets delighted by it and then you're not looking at it in like you know, six months saying, oh man, I do so much better now. I just want to throw that away. You know, that way your work gets appreciated. And um, and I think it, encour it encourages me to paint more the less artwork I have hanging around because, um, because you know, if I have a lot hanging around, then I'm thinking, oh, I've got all this around. I shouldn't even bother. I've got so much stuff. But, um, but if you can mail it off and brighten somebody else's day, then, you know, you give it a purpose. You give your practice a purpose. More, more than just like it's a, you know, the purpose obviously is to get better, but you give it more of a purpose. Okay, cool. I like the way that looks. All right. Now you can stop and dry this now if you want to. Just make sure you don't have any puddles. If you do, either blot them or just lay down a dry brush in there and soak it up. Uh, but while this is, um, I can just carefully go into the middle of the flower and add a little bit of uh, light yellow color. I think I'm actually going to just kind of liquefy those pencil marks a little bit. They are a little harsh. So this is going to soften them a little bit because I'm, I'm pretty much going to do everything with a paint. So I don't really need tons of pencil marks there. So I'm softening. And you can use whatever brand of watercolor pencils you like. Honestly, these are Primas. I've used, there's, there's so many great brands out there that I like. Um, these just happen to be what I keep up in my office. So, you know, use, use whatever you have. I don't think you need to have a bunch of different brands. Although I would say that if you are going to do finished work with your watercolor pencils, more than just like sketching underneath, um, you'll want to research and make sure you get a light fast pencil like an Albright Drewer or um, or a Caran d'Ache or something like that, just to make sure your work's going to last. So I'm going to let that dry. And I think I also want to do some of that color on the leaves. Do like go underwash of that color. I'm just trying, I'm going to try to keep this as real time as possible because, um, I've heard so many times that that it's easier to learn when you have it real time because it's not like if I if I show you a five minute video of something that took me an hour to paint, then it can be very frustrating when you're trying to paint it and and you're like, ah, uh, I can't get this done in you know ten minutes, let alone five, and then come to find out it took you know the artist a long time to do it. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it real time. <laughs> I'm gonna dry this real quick. So that we can progress on to the flower a little bit more. I love that. Sometimes I just love to look at the colors mix and mingle on the page. I just, I think they're so pretty. So this is something new. I, I recently grabbed one of these um, porcelain palettes. I always thought they were more expensive. That was $4 at Consumer Crafts. And um, I like it. And I'm using just a Dollar Tree dish over here for a mixing area if I need it and I'm trying to use up that that Daniel Smith paint on my palette because it was that's what I had my paint on for teaching the course because I didn't want 
things to get too confusing, having too many colors out. Um, but I really like mixing on a glass plate, and I really like having my paints on that little ceramic dish. It's just so less, much less confusing when you just have a few colors out there. And I think it's so pretty to look at. And I think it looks really cute when I use it on um, on a, in a tutorial because it's it's so much less cluttered. I think for you guys to watch. But um, I don't. Let me know what you think in the video in the uh, in the comments below. So now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat each petal individually, and this means we're going to be skipping around a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this one petal very carefully back here, okay? So I'm going to go right up to the edge and make sure if there's any loose red pigment that I'm kind of activating it so I don't have a harsh outline. Blotting my brush off because I had a little bit too much on there. Now I'm going to take some quinacridone uh, rose. And I'm just going to dab that in there. Now we have that warm yellow underneath, so I don't feel like I need to put um, a bunch more. I feel like that can kind of shine through, that layer can shine through, and I'll have this lovely color there. If you feel like you do want more, though, you totally can. Just clean your brush off. Okay, scrape the edge off on your bucket. You don't really need to blot it. Unless see, unless it seems really juicy, if your paintbrush seems like, and what I'll do is I'll blot kind of the belly of the brush and not the tip so I get out the water but I don't waste the pigment and then I can add that in. Now what you'll see here is that that yellow paint is not going off my brush and the reason of that is because um, my brush is drier and it wants to suck up all that wet paint. So um, learning how much how to balance the amount of paint and water on your paper versus what's in your brush is part of is growing as an artist. It's something that you you practice and you learn and it's not even like you're intentionally practicing it. It's just something that you you observe as you go. So if you want your paint to come off your brush and go onto the paper, the paper has to be slightly drier than the brush so it lets it feed on through. Okay, so we'll go back into that lovely Quinn Rose and we'll add that to the edge and just let it kind of float around. And you may find that, oh, I got this little sliver of white. You might want to leave that there. I like that. I'm leaving that just a little, it's just a little hint, just a little sliver. I am cleaning my brush between colors because I want them to stay fresh until they decide to mix themselves on the paper. I think it's really lovely. And I like that every petal is going to do its own thing. So the next petal I'm going to go to, I need to make sure that it's not touching that one or that one. So I'm going to skip over here. And this is probably going to get a little repetitive and I apologize. Um, but I know some people like to keep it in here. So if this is too repetitive for you, we're pretty much doing this for all these petals. And if you want to skip ahead until we're ready to work on the leaves, you are more than welcome to do that. I hope my, I hope the audio sounds all right. I'm kind of, I'm recording upstairs in my office with my webcam that I do my live streams with just cause I was, um, it was all set up and ready to go. And I was like, you know, I feel like sitting up here, sun shining outside for a brief moment. I want to kind of soak it in. <laughs> now I can see that this is kind of tucked under a little fold over area. So I am getting that concentration of color right underneath that fold. So just kind of, you know, pay attention to your lines you put there a little bit, but you don't have to be a slave to them. I had a lot of color in there. If you get too much color, blot your brush off and go in there with the kind of semi-dry brush and you can lift off a little bit and just kind of kind of uh, make things go where you want them to go. So again, I need to skip them. So, but basically, I just need to skip that little folded over section I can, and I can go right to the next petal. So we're going to, again, wet the petal. And I, I don't, and you know, notice, probably notice I'm using this Royal Majestic, which is a synthetic brush, very similar to the type of hair that you would find in any, pardon me, uh, acrylic painting brush, just like the Golden Taclon. Um, and the reason I'm using this is because I, I don't want to get too much, uh, too much water. I might be fighting if I used a Mimic just because it just holds so much water. So you could totally use whatever you want. I noticed that some papers just uh, work better with some brushes. And this paint, a little, goes a long way. Um, so it's another reason why it's kind of nice just to squirt out a tiny little bit. Whoop. That yellow is really strong. That's the uh, new gamboge from Daniel Smith. I just got that little essential set, and I just think that's such a wonderful little set. I don't know if I have the box over here I can show you. Uh, it's really nice because 
It's a split primary uh, system, so you can mix pretty much anything you want. You can find that. Um, Amazon usually has it the cheapest. I'll link it below, but I'm going to be able to find it in your local your local store. I try to find it around $25, but because like in some places it's going to be like 60 So, you know, just keep your, keep your eyes open. All right, so now I'm going to skip over. I think I'll skip over to do this overturned area. So the, the little parts of the petals that are kind of curved over, those are going to be lighter. So I want this to be a little bit more in the yellow department. So I'm going to put the yellow in, just kind of gently drip some of that on the edges. In fact, I think I might keep that one all that kind of yellow color. So the key here is really just cleaning your brush in between. So this guy over here, I kind of like how it's fading, how the tip of that is white. So I think I'm just going to add a little bit of the uh, rose right down here and let it kind of wick out and try to keep preserve that white on the edge. And if it's too, if you want to soften it, just clean your brush off, blot it, and you can soften around the edge. But I really like how the light's kind of illuminate, illuminating that petal. Uh, over here, again, we're going to wet this petal. Hopefully I have enough water in there. I'm going to grab some of the red. Now you're probably wondering, how come you're going for the red first every time? Well, because the red is a little bit darker and cooler, I know that if I have too much, if I have more red, it's going, it's not going to give me as much chance for mud as if I had a lot of yellow because, um, warm colors will, uh, and, and, you know, definitely use warm colors, but warm colors will definitely have more of a tendency to go muddy than cool colors. And also you could get, um, well, I mean, this yellow is really strong, but in a lot of cases you could get a lot of yellow down and not quite realize it until you go in to put your red on there. And then you've got, um, you've got kind of like a muddy situation happening. I'm going to skip over here and do this turn and that turn because I can feel that stuff's dry right around it. Things are drying really quick today with the, I think it's because it's been really chilly. Um, so the heat's been on, but now I have all these lights on it too. So everything's just super, uh, super warm now. I'll just put yellow in that one actually. And if you do get a little like um, colored pencil, watercolor pencil there that didn't dissolve, you can just kind of gently scrub it with the tip of your synthetic brush. Because they're a little bit stiffer, they can handle that. And now this guy over here, we've got another little guy pe peeking out. I'm going to do the same thing. We'll go in with our red first. You might want to leave a little bit of that white just kind of doing its thing on the edge because it just gives it that kind of glow. And maybe just a little smidgen of the yellow. There. And if you get too much, of course, you can use a clean paper towel to just give it a gentle little blot. Not a lot, because you do want to leave some of that color there. Okay, so I think I'm going to come up and do these two inner petals right there. Or I, they're more like, whoops, I just dropped some water on there. They're more like a shadowed petal because you do have, they're kind of tucked in behind other ones. And they've got like kind of turns on them that are overlapping. So they're going to be a little darker. And um, I'm going to go in and do all my darks at once. No, this is a very complex, only using two colors. So it's, you know, for these petals. So... You know, there's really this very little chance of getting mud. The most that's going to happen is that we end up with a kind of an orangey or a peachy looking flower, and that's fine. It's nice to have projects like that. We don't have to worry too much. And I'm going to grab some yellow, which I'm sure you could have predicted. that a little bit there all right and that does look a little dark to me so I am going to just simply blot a little bit there okay and just a couple other little petals left to go and I'm just gonna go in add a little of that red right there where oops I got a big puddle there so I'm gonna soak some of that up because it's it's more than I realized. I'm going to put in the concentrated red next to those other petals and just kind of let them 
wick out. And soften the edge. And I can put a little smidgen of yellow in there if I want to. And I think I'll do a little bit of yellow just to, you know, because I have enough on my brush. I'm just going to hit the edge of that. And then I'm going to move over to this one. Which really doesn't need too much. Maybe just a little bit of red because it's got a nice yellow base. A little bit of that on the edge. I really think that's probably about all it needs. And I'm probably going to leave that one be for now because we're going to work on the stem. So I am going to just grab some. I'm actually going to do wet on dry now. So I'm grabbing some of this. Um, you can use sap green. This is Sennelier Olive, which I'm usually not a big fan of olive, but the Sennelier one is just very luminous and beautiful. So uh, and I was what I'm doing there was just touching that to make sure it was dry. And I am just going to paint in my stem there. Nothing too fancy. And... I'm going to throw in just a few little thorns. I just want to be nice and uh, easy about that. I don't want to get too fussy. I'm painting these portions of the flower too. And now we're going to move over to the leaves here. And I think I'm just going to kind of paint the shadows in. So I'm going to start with this kind of vein down the center. I don't want it to get too fussy. Throw a few little veins on the side. And they can kind of blend out into the area, the side that I wet there a little bit. I think that looks kind of cool. I can soften that edge a little bit because we don't have a lot of detail anywhere here, so I really don't want to go too nuts with any detail. Maybe just give a little bit of that serrated edge. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but my cat is meowing to me outside. I have the, had the back door open and she went outside. Now she's regretting her decision. <laughs> So again, I think what I like really like doing was wetting a couple little areas here so that some of the paint will kind of uh, flow a little uncontrollably. I kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of repeat that here. I'm going to get that serrated edge again. So if you paint those things kind of detailed, the little get those little serrations in there and then let the paint kind of flow where it wants to go, you can get a really cool kind of loose, suggestive look there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This one I think I might actually do a little yellow on. Instead of just doing watery and loose, put a little yellow on that one, see what happens there. And go in again with center vein. Look at that serrated edge just by kind of dabbing it with our brush. By the way, I taped my card to the back of a, a watercolor pad, another watercolor pad. So if you're wondering what I'm to get my stuff taped to, hey, I use whatever works, whatever I can get my hands on that will do the trick. Okay, and I'm gonna add, uh, I think I might add a little brown, but I haven't used any brown yet, so I'm gonna make my own. I'm gonna take this uh, green and I'm going to grab some red, some of that Quinn Rose. We'll see what we get. We might need to add a little yellow to it if it's not too brown. Oh, that's pretty brown because they're opposites. They're complementary colors. They will go brown. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that into the uh, stem. Okay, so now I feel like I want, um, I'm going to need a darker green. So for that, I'm going to take some of this olive. I'm going to grab some phthalo because that's going to give us a more vivid dark green and I can clean up my palette. And let's see what that looks like in some of these areas. I can add a little bit of that into some of the wet washes. It just gives us a lively burst of color. Now I'm going to grab some ultramarine into that mix and that's going to give us a desaturated color because it's not 
the green we typically use to do, um, you know, to make a vivid green, it's going to give us a darker green. So that's what we want kind of up here for the these little uh, those little guys. And then I also do want to add a little bit here and there, just because if you do it to one section, you really want to do it elsewhere, just to make it make it kind of um, harmonize, cross pollinate with the other colors. I'm really liking how the leaves and the stem are coming out. I feel like the uh, like the flower itself is a little too fussy. So in order to loosen that up, I'm actually going to switch to a looser brush. I'm going to go to, um, this is a softer brush. I'm actually going to grab its bigger sister here, this number 12 round. And I am going to grab just some kind of watery uh, quinacridone rose here. And I am just going to use some big brush strokes to just kind of liven things up here in some of the areas. Any place where I feel like I would have more like shadow. I just feel like, I think because I put the background in first, it really, um, it kind of forced my hand as to where the flower was going to be. So I feel like I just, it just got made everything way too tight and fussy. So I'm just kind of going in and softening some of that. And anytime I feel like things have gotten too fussy, and I know a lot of guys don't like to do this, but I like to spatter. I'm going to blot a little bit of that off just because I feel like I lost some of the definition, but I'm going to do a little spattering. And I should have let that little hip area dry before I did that, but you guys can do that when you do your painting, I guess. And I'm going to do a little flick of the rose. Just going to be careful it doesn't look like, you know, blood spatter when you're doing that. A little bit of the green. I'm always afraid I'm going to get paint on the camera when I do that. All right, so I'm just going to blast this real quick with my dryer. And um, I can't wait to take the tape off because I think that always makes it look a little bit more finished. This painting did come out a little darker than I had anticipated, and I think it's because I put a background in. But, um, but you never can really tell how it looks until you've given it a little time, I don't think. Once I get the flower area dry, I can go in there and work a little bit. And I think I might go back to the pencils because that will give me, um, I'll be able to be a little more expressive, I think. Okay, so the flower area is dry. I'm just going to blot some of these spatters just because they are so juicy. Move some of those. Okay, and now I'm going to grab this pencil and... Gonna be a little more deliberate with what I'm doing here. Thinking that maybe if I had just gone in and painted without sketching at first, I would have preferred, I would have liked my results a little bit better. It feels a little kind of stiff and fussy to me. adding a little touches of pink and uh, and red. Now I'm going to just, I am going to go in with my brush and some um, ultramarine and some olive and get that nice dark color and just kind of, kind of activate some of those greens that I put in there. And now go back to the flower a little bit and liquefy some of the colored pencil. And if you don't like this, if you like this like five steps ago, then that's where you stop when you're doing yours. All right, I'm really not sure what you think about this. Uh, this did not turn out the way I had hoped, to be absolutely honest. 
Um, but I'm going to take the tape off and see what I think of it. So be careful if your paper's wet, make sure that you pull your tape off um, at an angle and just be very, actually let it dry. Don't attempt to pull your tape off wet because that's usually a recipe for disaster. We'll take a look at this anyway. We'll see if we have anything worth posting to YouTube. <laughs> All right, and there we have it. There is our picture. I think it needs work. I really like the way the leaves came up with the flower. I'm not so crazy about. So uh, you can let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to think on that. I might come back with uh, a little bit of extra detailing, but we will see. Thank you so much for watching. If you happen to like it, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy crafting. I decided to go back to the drawing board on this one, and um, I think I'm going to go in here while I am. This is what I have in my hand. Um, by using a smaller brush, I think maybe I can carve out some of the sharper lines that got lost. So I'm almost going to go in in like a paint, in like a almost like a brush lettering style, and just kind of add some sharper crisper lines here. I think that's kind of where I really kind of went wrong. I, I feel like, I don't know, everything's just kind of smushed together, but it's not loose in a good way. It's just kind of, you know, messed up. So, uh, so I'm going in here with this darker color, more concentrated, basically. It's the same color. I'm just using it more concentrated and just kind of grabbing back some detail so of course you don't want to do too much because if you do you're going to end up in the same boat that you were in to begin with but I think sometimes if you just go in and you know you well first of all give your eyes a little bit of a break and then you go in you can see where you're where you're kind of messed up And I think that's going to help me out a little bit there. But I have to say, I mean, this is not one of my favorite paintings. Um, but it's a lovely, but I think it's fine as a card, you know? Hand-painted cards are nice. And, you know, get, do a little practice every day. Everything's not going to come out perfectly. But, you know, the practice is good. And I think I'm actually want to lift out a little bit of color on the, um, on the, those little, those little tiny leaves that are on the hip of the flower because they're way too dark. And I can see that now that I've had a little break. And see what I mean about this, cut, this uh, paper being really easy to lift? You know, there's just a little scrub with a damp brush and I'm able to bring that right back up. And I think that might help me out too. I like that a lot better. Give a little blot. And there I have a little bit of um, contrast. I can go in with a watercolor pencil and bring it out a little bit. So, you know, hey, it still kind of looks a little bit of, like, it almost looks cut and paste because there's so much contrast between the flower and the background. I'm not crazy about that. But, I mean, I think with every picture, you can find something you like about it. I like the leaves and the stem an awful lot. Uh, I think because the technique is more loose and free and fun, uh, whereas the, you know, that flower, for me, felt a little sh fell a little short. But, uh, but again, you can let me know what you think. And um, I hope it was helpful for somebody. Thanks so much for watching. And really, this time, happy crafting. <laughs>